Hi there. In this video, we're going to have a look at some 3D shapes, some three-dimensional shapes, and also talk about certain properties that we should know about these 3D shapes. Okay, so we're starting with this shape here. First thing, of course, is we need to uh, know the name of some shapes. So we should be aware that this 3D shape is called a cube. There will be certain shapes throughout the lesson that you already know. There may be shapes that you need to go away and research, have a little look up on the internet, or just do a little bit revision to remember and memorize the name of certain shapes. Okay. One of the properties we need to know about shapes is we need to know how many faces it has. This word, he this word here refers to how many 2D shapes this 3D shape is made up of. Okay, so we have a square on the bottom, a square on the top, a square on the side, a square on this side, a square on the back, and a square on the front. So altogether, this shape is made up of six faces. I'll show you that uh, in a little bit more depth on the next slide. For this word here, vertices, that is the plural of vertex. Vertex refers to a corner. Vertices refers to corners. So we're basically looking at the shape and working out how many pointy bits it has, how many corners it has. So we've got one, two, three, four on the top, five, six, seven, Eight. So we have eight corners all together, or if we want to be a little bit more mathematical, eight vertices. We also need to know the edges of a shape. So the definition of an edge is where two faces meet. So for example, this here is an edge. So every time we have a straight line where two faces meet, we would call it an edge. So if I was counting up the edges, I have one, two, three, four on this side. I also have another four on this side. Five, six, seven, and eight. But then I also have some edges connecting each side. Nine, ten, eleven, and twelve edges all together. So as we work through the shapes, you'll get more and more confident at calculating how many edges a 3D shape has. But essentially, you're counting all the lines where two faces meet. I did mention I was going to focus on how to count the faces uh, in a little bit more uh, depth. So I'm just going to have a quick look at that now. What we could do is we could visualize the net of the cube. So if we took this 3D shape and unraveled it or flattened it out to what it would look like before it was put together to create three dimensions, the shape would look like this. I've left on these little grid areas, which would be the folds you needed when you assembled the 3D shape, just so you can try and visualize how the net would fold together. But now look how easy it is to see the faces, how many there is, and also what shapes they are made up of. As soon as we visualize the net of the 3D shape, one, two, three, four, five, six faces, all of them are squares. So that's just an easier way of trying to work out how many faces a shape has, or an alternate way, I should say, by visualizing the net of the shape that you're dealing with. Let's have a look at another shape. So a slightly trickier shape here. So we do have this front face, which looks like a pentagon, a five-sided shape. And this shape is a typical prism. If we sliced it, the cross section would remain the same. So we could work out that the name of this shape is a pentagonal prism. If you didn't know that, or you don't know any of the shapes 
uh, later on in the video, you might need to do a little bit of research online. So we've got a pentagonal prism. Again, I want to know these three properties. How many faces do, does it have? Well, it has a pentagon at the front, a pentagon at the back, so that's two faces, and it also has five rectangular faces. One, two, three, one underneath is four, and this one here, five. So in total, we're dealing with seven faces. Again, on the next slide, I'll show you the net of a pentagonal prism, where we'll be able to identify the seven faces. For vertices, remember we're looking for how many corners, how many pointy bits. We have one, two, three, four, five here. And then at the back of the shape, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So 10 corners, 10 pointy bits, 10 vertices. For edges, remember they are a line where two faces meet. So this would be an edge, one. This would be an edge, two. This would be an edge, three. This would be an edge, four. This would be an edge, five. We also have another five at the back of the shape taking us up to 10 edges. And then we also have five joining the pentagon at the front to the pentagon at the back. So all together with this shape, we have a total of 15 edges. Let's have a little look at those faces in a bit more detail. If we were to unravel the pentagonal prism and have a look at its net, it would look something like this. Again, I've left the grid um, flaps on which you would use if you were constructing the, uh, pris the pentagonal prism just so you can try and visualize how that would work. What we're interested in is the faces. We have one, two faces that are pentagons and we also have five rectangular faces, seven faces all together and hopefully you can try and visualize how this net would fold to create this pentagonal prism. Okay, one more example from me before I give you a couple of tasks to work through. So here we have uh, a pyramid. And if we look at the bottom, we are dealing with a square based pyramid. Okay, a square based pyramid. The dimensions here make the base look a bit like a rectangle, but that's just the viewpoint of the shape we have. So we're actually dealing with a square based pyramid. Again, we'll see that more in depth on the net on the next slide. If we want to know faces, we have one, two, three, and one on the back, four triangular faces. And we also have a square face as the base, five faces altogether. For vertices, we're looking at one, two, three, four, five um, vertices, five points. So that is telling us that we have five corners, five vertices. If we look at for edges, we've got one edge here. This is also an edge two. This is also an edge three. This is also an edge four. And then we also have the four edges that go from the base to the point at the top, to the vertex at the top, giving me a total of eight edges all together. Quickly looking at the net of a square base pyramid, we can see we have one face, which is a square that's used for the base, and then one, two, three, four, triangles which would fold up to create the four sides, the four faces of the 3D square based pyramid. Okay, here's your first task. Okay, what I would like you to do is copy out the table in front of you. And around the table, there are six 3D shapes, some of which we've talked about, some of which we haven't talked about. And um, those ones that you aren't aware of, you might need to do a little bit of research. For each of the six shapes, could you name the shape, count up its faces, its edges, 
and its vertices and complete the table. If you want to make this task a little bit easier for yourself, on the next slide, I have already given you, given you the six names of the shapes. But if you want a little bit of a challenge, pause the video now and have a go at copy and completing this table. Okay, welcome back. If you wanted to make this task a little bit easier, I did say on the next slide, I would introduce you to six of the names. So now you have six names, which you can match up with six of the shapes. And again, go ahead and complete the table. If you haven't already done so, could you pause the video now and complete this task? Okay, welcome back. And here is the completed table. So you can see the name of the shape that corresponds to the six shapes surrounding the table. And I filled it in with how many faces, how many edges, and how many vertices or corners each shape has. Some of the shapes we've already discussed in the video, some of the shapes you would have had to research yourself. Okay, I'm just going to look a little bit more in depth into the octahedron and the icosahedron by having a little look at their nets. So here we go. We have the net of an icosahedron. You can see how complex the net starts to become. And we have the net of the octahedron here. So if you look at the octahedron, as you might expect with the word oct, we're dealing with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight faces, eight triangular faces, which is why we end up with eight faces here. For the icosahedron, which is this shape down here, it consists of 20 triangular faces, which go together to make this 3D shape. So if we look again at the net, Remember, I've left these folds on just to show you where things would be attached if you were assembling the net. But what we're interested in is the 20 triangular faces, which corresponds to the 20 in this table. Very well done if you've completed that task. Um, quite a difficult task, especially with a couple of shapes we may not have met before. Okay, let's have a go at another task. Okay, here's your next task. Again, at this point, you have the ability to pause the video. You can see that there is 16 uh, boxes on the screen. 15 of them are blue and contain some information. I would like you to match these into groups of three. I want you to match each shape with its name and also a description of its properties. So could you write the name and the properties next to each other in your book and then maybe have a go at sketching the 3D shape as well. So if you could pause the video at this point and group the following shapes into groups of three. Okay, welcome back. I'm going to go ahead and show you my solution. So again, you have the ability to pause the video if you need to spend a little bit more time assessing or correcting your work. And I've tried to color code the answers here to show you which shape matches up with which name, which matches up with which explanation. So we've got our triangular prism, which is represented here, triangular face at the front, and it is a prism as if we were to slice it in half, the cross section would remain the same. And this box here describes the triangular prism. We have six corners, one, two, three, four, five, six, and the other properties are correct as well. Notice in this task, I use the word corners rather than the word vertices, and that's just to further enforce the fact that vertices and corners are interchangeable. They mean the exact same thing. Again, we've got the octahedron, which we met on the last task, an eight-sided shape represented by this 
prefix oct so you would expect eight faces and you can see down here eight triangular faces which is exactly what we explained when we looked at the net of the octahedron on a previous slide hexagonal base pyramid was a new shape but if we look at this pyramid and look at the base you can see it is a six-sided shape so we're dealing with a hexagon on the base so that should have given us some clue as to the fact that this name matched up with this shape very well done if you have matched those together okay last task okay if you got the last task fully correct you may want to just finish the video here as you may not uh, need to have a go at this little extra task but if you made some errors on the previous task uh, or you had some misconceptions, I would like you to please have a go at the following three shapes. Again, I would like you to name the shape. Uh, you may need a little bit of research if you don't know the shape already. And then can you calculate the faces, edges, and vertices of each of the 3D shapes? Could you pause the video at this point and have a go at the final task? Okay, welcome back. For the first one, we have a hexagonal prism, uh, a hexagon on the top, and it is a prism because the cross section would always be the same if we cut it. Eight faces, two of them are hexagons, six of them are rectangles, 18 edges, and 12 corners, 12 vertices. For the second shape, we have a hexagonal based pyramid. So again, a hexagon is present on the base. We have seven faces, one is a hexagon, six are triangular. We have 12 edges and seven corners, seven vertices. And finally, pentagonal prism, which has seven faces, 15 edges and 10 vertices. Very well done if you have completed that task. Hopefully, at the end of this video, you now know how to identify quite a few 3D shapes, but also how to work out those special properties of how many faces the shape has, how many edges the shape has, and how many vertices the shape has. Very well done.